The only way you'll know the condition and do a condition assessment, the investigative piece of a CMOM program, one of the only ways is, is you've got to televise it. There's no, you're not going to crawl in the pipe. And sewer, tele, sewer line televising, I can say as a goal, I would hope, this is a suggestion, that you look at doing a certain percentage of your system every year, good or bad. You need that baseline information. It's going to change. And so a lot of, a lot of proactive systems are doing about 10% of their system a year. So if you do five, it would take you 20 years. I don't know if you want to wait to do that. So a 10-year schedule is not bad. And what happens at the end of 10 years? You stop Oh. Yeah, you do it again. Start over again. And what that does is you have baseline information, but you're going to find some things you didn't know, and it'll help you make decisions and prioritizing your budget. And not just during a street project. Those days are really, I mean, the only time communities were, were dealing with their sewers were at street project time. They may not coincide. You may have, right, a really bad section of pipe, lots of basement backup, surcharging, whatever, that really needs attention soon. And you'll really know that if you televise it. So instead of that street project, which is a great pipe under the ground overall, and you have this other one that's really bad, where, would you, where, where do you want to put the money? The limited dollars that you have. So without belaboring this, I think a goal, one of the things if you leave here today is start thinking about that as a goal, doing a certain percentage of your system, good or bad, and getting that baseline information on your sewer system. And hopefully it's digital. I don't, I don't think anyone's doing tapes anymore, are they? Yes. Okay. Hey, Jack. Good question on your last slide. Um, for the previous slide there, for the uh, list station O&M, the units there, I never quite understood that, what that exactly means. If you go around and list there for list station O&M, the number per list station per year, is that supposed to be the number of list stations per year? No, it's, uh, if, if you're in the CMAR, most people don't do this, is if you're in the CMAR, and you click the help button, it defines every one of these. So it's, and it's major o and M. I don't have it in front of me. It defines what this is. So how many lift stations, how many lift stations had more major o and M in a given year? If you didn't do anything, if you didn't do anything in a lift station, that wouldn't be part of this. It's like this one, flow monitoring. I love flow monitoring. Everyone likes to write 100%. But that's not what this means. It means where you've taken cameras, I mean, sorry, sorry, flow meters, portable flow meters, and maybe been in a sewer shed or a sub-basin in your, in your sewer system, and you've monitored flows to get a handle on the I and I in that sewer shed. That's what this means. And whatever that sewer shed is, if it's 40% of your system, that's what that is. It's not that you're measuring flow. Uh, Pulaski's measuring 100% of their flow to, to new water. It's not what it means. So uh, that's a good question. When you're in, in the CMAR, when you're in this part of it, click on the help button and it defines every single one of these. Okay, I just want to take a minute on this. And I'll wrap up here. I'm finding um, in the city moms from the bigger communities, and, and it's making sense that um, even I just said the O and M is is like the meat and potatoes of a CMOM program, but I'm starting to find that so is this. Um, in fact, <coughs> oh. 
This is James does. Um, it's pretty good. Um, we also have an estimate of the man, there's a man, believe it or not, there's a manhole uh, estimate of, of how manholes overflow and coming up with estimates. We can provide that. Is that the San Diego one? No, this oh, is Jane, no. Uh, this might be, I don't know where they got it from, but the point is, um, this piece is very, very important. Um, and there's things in here that I need to add when we do the, the specify the training. One of the things that really jumped out at me here is, um, uh, is site investigation and categorization, and five, um, containment, recovery, and cleanup. So what are your procedures after you have, maybe not a small one, but a big one? Does everyone know what to do? So um, this is a, a, I think this is one of those kind of reports in, in a report. And I would start, uh, this is a suggestion of what I've been seeing now early on, is I would start looking at this piece. Now with that, and then I'm going to stop after these items. Here's an idea of what we're going to go through. Go ahead. Um, so for alarm systems and routine testing, you need, if these are lift stations, you're going to describe each lift station's alarm system, how it works, how often is it tested. You're going to keep records of how often it's tested. Contacts for repairs, if you need, hopefully the contacts are there. And if there's an alarm system at the treatment plant, especially the head works, these are high flow events, um, how it works, and especially during high, high weather flow. So if you have 10 lift stations, you'd have some info, and this type, type, even maybe more. Maybe you might have more specs on the alarm system at, at these lift stations. Next one. I'll just make a quick point. On that emergency contacts, I see this a lot where, you know, it's call Joe at, you know, some phone number, and, and it doesn't get updated frequently. And so emergencies, Keeping that emergency contact list, it's tedious, but it's one thing I see that it's not um, complete. And when you're running around an emergency, you need that list pretty quick. So that's one thing to kind of stay on top of. Yeah, and that's why I'm seeing from the CMOMs, I'm seeing why I think crisis management and is really tough, right? When you get up at 2 in the morning and um, and the people that are there doing it all the time, they're in, they got it, they're, they know what to do, but you can have new staff, and um, it's just good to have this piece solid, really solid. And I think it'll be solid, too, for claims and um, dealing with basement backups and some cleanup. Okay, so emergency equipment, same thing. What do you have? Generators, portable trumps, portable pumps, trash pumps. Um, trucks. What are you using? What's all your equipment? Where are they located? And uh, where do they get used if needed? I'm sure you, some get used everywhere. You have a certain pump, you need to pump out a manhole, it's used in the system, uh, or a system wide. Some others, you may have a generator at a lift station. It's just dedicated to that lift station. Hopefully that's exercise. And how right here, how often do on-site generators get tested? Hopefully not during an overflow event and it doesn't work. And power's out. Okay. Um, this is the biggest piece, and I think um, this is uh, a, the core of an emergency response plan. And um, I know this is worry. Um, but having a good plan means that you know where your most vulnerable parts of your system are. And because of that, then you're going to respond accordingly, right? So there, it's developing an emergency response based on the flows, list station retention times, pipeline surcharging, yeah, maybe some detention time in the pipe itself. 
before basement backups or overflow start to occur. So it's kind of asking where do you go first and with what equipment. And then next, and then next, especially during those big events. It's just one manhole, pretty easy. If it's one lift station, pretty easy. What if it's three lift stations and seven manholes? And you got people basement backups. Where is your priority? Where do you go with what and when? Describe the procedures and documentation for getting responding to basement backups. That's a piece two. Now you got to report basement backups. You have insurance claims. If you don't have a good basement backup record, time to start putting it together. And the, on the ones I've seen, communities that have good CMOMs have excellent basement backup records. And even if it's due to their lateral or it's, um, if it's due to a lateral, meaning it's someone else, or it's their system. Okay. And so when I was saying knowing your system where you go to, this is kind of, this gets at the capacity assurance piece, right? Areas with surcharging, bottlenecks, restrictions, where there's chronic basement backup as SSOs. Um, you'll, that'll help you if you really know your system. Part of that comes through televising, some comes from just knowing the flows through your system, flow monitoring. You'll know where to go during emergency. Mm -hmm. Where to go first, second, third, and you'll really help minimize then someone's basement getting back. Okay. You could go. Oh, I think I mentioned this. Here's that public notification piece. Um, I really want to cover this piece, not now, but in the training. The communication uh, the notification piece is really, really um, important. Okay. You can go through all of these. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, as you said, this is a repeat. We're going to cover this in more detail each one. And then lastly, I just want to leave you with um, a CMOM is supposed to be reevaluated. So, um, every year. So you may have certain goals, maybe you didn't get to them, or you're televising, uh, your televising led you to new discoveries or things that you need to do, and maybe budget for it and bring to the board, the governing body. But you would do that on an annual basis, and you would redo parts of your CMOM that you need to do, including your goals. If it's becoming that, there's no way you can tele televise 15% of your system, then back it off. Be realistic. Um, the last, uh, on, on your CMAR, I want to let, want to make sure everyone knows that there's these graph buttons. And this is, go ahead, now if you click on that, you'll get for basement backups this trend line. I need to update this, and I will. Um, so now we have, we'll have nine years of data. Now, if you've been doing this correctly, these are ratios. But the point is, a good, theoretically, a good O&M program, and if you're putting your limited resources in the right places, all the trends should be down or they should be zero. So you have a tool there to look at and to see how you're doing. And I would, um, it's a tool you can also bring to your boards. I think, I would hope, that if this trend is upward, if, there, if you see this going up, and yeah, there may be an, uh, uh, one crazy year, 2008, right? But this is a trend line. This is a linear regression. So we don't account for that one crazy value. I don't put the trend line like that. If you see it going up, I would hope it gives you pause and ask questions about what, what's going on, what's happening here. Same thing here, complaints, same thing. 